Hello, welcome to lesson 12, Prayers and Sacrifices of Israel. Before we start lesson 12, let's recap on lesson 11, the Feasts of Israel. We learnt about the various feasts that the people of Israel celebrated for gratitude and forgiveness. This included the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Passover, the Festival of Booths, the Feast of Pentecost and the Day of Atonement. We also learnt about the festivals celebrated by the Church today, such as Christmas, the Epiphany, Paschal Feast, Easter, the Ascension and Pentecost. There are many other feasts that we celebrate, but these six are regarded as holy days of obligation to help our spiritual growth. Let's begin today's lesson. Prayer is a conversation with God. Praise and worship to glorify God are also forms of prayer. This also includes our supplication to God. According to the Old Testament, calling upon the name of God in itself is prayer. At that time, people began to invoke the name of the Lord. Even after building the altar for sacrifice, the patriarchs were also in the habit of invoking God's name. They also used to pray in private and individually. They prayed in the morning and in the evening. Abraham had prayed for the cities that were going to be destroyed as a result of their sinfulness. Moses on many occasions conducted prayers on behalf of the Israelites. The cry of the Israelites from Egypt was a prayer that reached the ears of God and he responded. Once they reached the land of Canaan, the people of Israel offered special prayers and sacrifices to God and maintained a special relationship with him. These prayers and acts of worship were an expression of the relationship between God and man. The life of prayer and worship of the Israelites were mostly centred on the temple. The Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of the presence of God in the midst of the people of Israel. Having reached Canaan, they put up the Ark in Gilal later shifted to places like Bethel and Shiloh, and was kept in a special tent or booth. Those places thus became the centres of worship. King David wished to erect a suitable temple to house the Ark of the Covenant, but it was Solomon, the son of David, who got God's grace to accomplish the act of erecting a temple. Solomon took seven years to complete the Temple of Jerusalem. For the Israelites, the Temple of Jerusalem was a centre for worship and expression of faith. The Temple was a place that God had chosen to reveal his presence to the people of Israel. The Temple of Jerusalem had a very important, central place in the life of the Israelites. For centuries, the Temple of Jerusalem was the place of worship for the Israelites. In the later years, the Jews were exiled and unable to have the Temple as their centre for worship. They had to find other means to conduct their worship. It was at this stage that they built synagogues. The word synagogue is derived from the Greek word synago, meaning get together. Synagogues were built in a prominent place in the city or in a high place. These were built facing the Holy Church of Jerusalem. On the days of Sabbath and feast days, there were special services in the synagogues. Here, the Torah, Book of Laws was read. The synagogue was also a place of assembly for the Jews. It became a place to discuss the common problems of the people and to conduct meetings. The synagogues gave the people opportunities for a life in faith at a time when the temple and temple worship had ceased to exist. The Psalms are hymns or prayer songs that were produced as a result of special life circumstances of the people of Israel. The Jews were in the habit of singing these psalms during festivals and pilgrimages. The psalms were composed in such a way that they could be sung to the accompaniment of instruments or without them. It is believed that they were composed by King David. Some of them might have been written by someone else in David's name. There are altogether 150 psalms in the Holy Bible. On the basis of their contents, the psalms may be classified into praise psalms, lament psalms and thanksgiving psalms. In these psalms we can clearly see the deep relationship between God and his people. Right from the olden days, the people of Israel used to offer sacrifices to God. They offered sacrifices to praise and worship God, to express thanks for the blessings from God, to do penance for the sins committed and to receive blessings from God. 
when god gave the laws to moses particular directions regarding the offer of sacrifices were also given sacrifices were offered for the whole community or for an individual they were on an altar in the temple and were offered by the priests the people of israel used to perform different kinds of sacrifices for different purposes there were offerings of peace for penance and for atonement of sins a sacrifice is a form of worship that people offer to god who created everything People offer themselves to God along with the materials that they offer in the sacrifices. It is not the number of sacrifices that counts with God, but the attitude which they are offered. The meaning of the Hebrew word Sabbath is to rest or take a break. Taking a break from all sorts of work or labour. The day of Sabbath is to be spent in the service of God. The Israelites observed Sabbath on the seventh day of the week in remembrance of the seventh day God had taken after finishing the work of creation in six days. In the commandments that he gave through Moses, God gave the following direction, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. To the Israelites, the Sabbath was a day of joy, rest and worship. Jubilee celebration is very important in the social life of Israel. After settling in Canaan, God commanded them that after six years of sowing and reaping, they should observe the seventh year as Sabbath. The year that follows a series of seven Sabbaths is the Jubilee year. That fiftieth year shall be a jubilee for you, it shall be holy to you. God also gave special instructions on how to celebrate the jubilee. The jubilee celebrations reminded them that the land belongs to God and brotherly relationship should exist among the people. For the new people of God, places of worship are known as churches. These churches are the symbols of God's presence. Holy Mass and other sacred rites are celebrated in the church. Those who join together in the front of the altar of God are truly the people of God. In the church, Sabbath is celebrated on Sunday, the first day of the week. The Christians observe Sunday as Sabbath because Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday. Sunday is to be observed by attending Holy Mass in the parish church and involving in activities of charity. This is also the day to learn more about Jesus. For the people of Israel, the temple, the sacrifices, the worship and prayer, all were symbols of their relationship with God. But Jesus gave a new meaning for all of these. When we participate in the customary rites and rituals of the church, we shall be mature enough to obey the precepts of Jesus. Thus, let us become true disciples of Jesus.